Good morning. And welcome on the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A warm welcome to our parishioners and everyone visiting us this weekend. We invite you to participate in this sacred liturgy with full heart and voice, joining in the responses and singing of the hymns and service music. The special collection today is for Williamsburg House of Mercy, our parish's outreach to the local poor. Your generous gifts feed, clothe, house, and provide pregnancy support and other emergency services to families and individuals. Homelessness and hunger don't take a vacation. Already this summer, we have moved 25 individuals into stable housing. This week, we served 208 families in one day on our drive through food pantry. Thank you for answering Christ's call to serve our neighbors in need. Our parish depends on and thanks you for your continued financial support in order to meet the many spiritual and material needs of our parishioners and our local community. You may place your offering for the parish or the special collection envelope for the Williamsburg House of Mercy in the wooden collection boxes in the baptistry. In observance of Independence Day on Monday, parish offices will be closed. Daily Mass will be celebrated at 9 a.m. There will be no reconciliation and no exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, and the church will be closed following the 9 a.m. Mass. The presider at this Mass is Father Anthony Ferguson, assisted by Deacon Francis Rodinger. Please stand and greet those around you. Please join in singing hymn number 995, God of Our Fathers, number 995.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I was asked to give a brief inter introduction. Uh, my name is Father Anthony Ferguson. Uh, I was just assigned here at St. Bede. I've spent the last two years in Roanoke at St. Andrew's Catholic Church. I'm getting used to the in the round, so I'm sorry if my back is to you. Uh, but it's really a blessing to be here. Uh, just a brief word about where I've been and what I've been doing. Uh, so I grew up in Richmond. I was born in Pittsburgh. I'm still a Steelers fan and Penguins fan. I've met many of them already here. Uh, but I grew up in Richmond. I went to University of Richmond for college. I studied art and art history, worked for a few years as a graphic designer, and then God called me into the seminary. And so I'm just really grateful to be here uh, as your priest, and I look forward to seeing just all of the amazing things God does through us. So uh, thank you for having me. In order to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. abasement of your son have raised up a fallen world fill your faithful with holy joy for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. Exult, exult with her, all you who are mourning over her. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breasts. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent. As nurslings, you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem, you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, brothers and sisters. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be to all who follow this rule and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make troubles for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. The word of the Lord. With you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others, whom He sent ahead of Him in pairs to every town and place He intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the labor deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The 72 returned rejoicing and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to, to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, 
do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. is at hand for you. That's what Jesus told the 72 disciples to go out and tell everyone, and that's how I would like to begin my new priestly assignment here with you, the good people of St. Bede. The kingdom of God is at hand for you. I want to claim that truth. I want to lean heavy onto that truth. God's kingdom is here. And because that is true, because the kingdom really is here, and because Jesus, the king himself, really is here, all I want to say is, well, I can't wait to see what incredible things God does here at St. Bede. I can't wait to see how his power is made manifest among us, and already is in so many ways. So my question for all of us this morning is, are we open to witnessing his power today? Are we ready to rejoice at the tangible presence of his kingdom? Just look at what he was able to do through the hands of those 72 disciples in our gospel today. People were physically cured. Hearts were softened and converted. Demons were driven out. The gospel was preached not in empty talk, but with deeds of power. And when all those things started to happen, the disciples came running back to Jesus, didn't they? They came running back. The announcement of the kingdom astonished even them. And they came to the Lord saying, look at what we've been doing, Lord. Even the demons are subject to us because of your name. I have to imagine Jesus in that moment just looked at them and, and was like, well, yeah, duh. I've given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the whole force, the full force of the enemy. Nothing will harm you, he says. This sort of stuff is supposed to happen when believers go out in my name. This is what I came to do, he seems to be saying to them. This is what my father is all about. Why are you so surprised? Now, I don't know about you, but I pray and fully expect that the same things will happen today through you. Does that surprise you? Maybe sometimes we think we're not holy enough or worthy enough for God to do anything like that through us. And yet he's promising just this. We heard it today in that beautiful, that beautiful first reading from the prophet Isaiah. Lo, I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. I love that last line. The Lord's power will be known by his servants. That's us. We are his servants. You've been baptized into the name of the most holy trinity. You literally have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. You've been nourished here at this altar by the body and blood of Jesus himself. You have known God's infinite mercy in the confessional. You have, you have been personally empowered to go be missionaries for the Lord, to go without sandals or money sack or anything and share the gospel in this day and age, to work wonders big and small 
in the name of Jesus today. Jesus' own words in another part of the Gospels come to mind here. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater things, greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. And so I say it again. I can't wait to see what God does here. I can't wait. Father John Ricardo, the founder of a, a group called Acts 29, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that, uh, he recently wrote something on this sort of thing that I found really encouraging. So I'll share it with you this morning as well. Clearly, God didn't want you and me to live in a time that is dull and monotonous, he writes. He wanted us to live now. He has equipped us with everything we need to be instruments in his hands in order to share the gospel. These are not dark days, he says, but great days to be alive. God is not nervous or anxious. He's chosen you and me for this moment. Wow, I think that that is something that we need to be constantly reminded of. God's chosen us for this precise moment in history, for these admittedly challenging and yet fruitful days. Jesus said the harvest is abundant and he's sending us out today just as he sent those 72. And yeah, that, they, that will often, often feel like being sent out like lambs among wolves. We all know full well that, that the gospel message is, is hard to stomach for a lot of the people in our culture today. The faith seems archaic and sort of backwards to modern minds, and, and all of those opponents out there seem quite poised to try to devour us, to try to tear us down and make religion something private and hopefully irrelevant. But Jesus' invitation is still very clear. He says to us, be not afraid. No harm will come to you. These are not dark, hopeless days to be Christian. Far from it, they are actually great days to be sent out on apostolic mission. Great days to preach the always surprising, always effective, good news. So why should we be nervous or anxious about anything? I think we can be, I know that we can, be utterly convinced that God is going to do something incredible through us here in our parish, in our communities, in our families, because he's still working miracles. He is still casting out demons. He is still curing people. He's still healing and comforting souls. He's still converting our hearts, still calling us to repentance. And guess what? People are still responding in faith, still witnessing his tremendous deeds in their daily lives, still selling everything, leaving everything for Jesus. And sure, some people are gonna reject the message that we proclaim. Some won't be able to recognize that the kingdom of God really is at hand, despite all of the great signs and wonders that God works in our midst. But when that happens, Jesus tells us what we should do, doesn't he? Just shake the dust off of your feet and keep going. Keep moving forward. Focus on what the Father of mercies is doing and give him all of the praise. As our beautiful psalm today put it, shout joyfully to God all of the earth. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Come and see the works of God. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. But I'd like to finish today's homily by asking another more important question. Because, well, where, where does this power come from? Where does this power come from? to do great things in the Lord's name? How can we possibly dare to hope that God will do such great things through us? Well, St. Paul gave us the answer in our second reading today when he says, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. That is key because all of our fruitfulness 
as disciples of Jesus, all of the power that fills us and flows out from our hands, it flows from the cross of Jesus. That's what makes our words and our deeds living and effective. We have no other boast, nothing else to claim to be proud of. We can't do God's work if we don't root ourselves in the super abundantly fruitful and perfect sacrifice of Jesus. And apart from the cross, we can do nothing. Apart from his life, death, and resurrection, there is no harvest. So we rejoice not in our own power today and always, but in the power of the cross. We rejoice not that the spirits are subject to us, but rather that our names are written in heaven. By that precious blood of Jesus, our names are written in heaven. So we can go out by that blood, by the power of that blood, and announce to all of the world, the kingdom of God is at hand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of Placing all of our confidence in God, we now present all of our prayers and petitions to him. For God's holy church, may we trust not in power or possession, but in the Lord's abiding care, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, as we celebrate our independence, may it tirelessly seek to preserve peace, promote national happiness, and continue to share the blessings of liberty and equality. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president and our governor, may they encourage due respect for virtue and religion, execute our laws with justice and mercy, and discharge their duties with honesty and ability. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a new commitment to building an America where children are welcomed cherished and cared for, where mothers and fathers are encouraged and strengthened, and where marriage and the family are recognized and supported as the true foundations of a healthy and flourishing society. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of food, housing, or medical care, may our gifts through the Williamsburg House of Mercy alleviate their hunger, provide them shelter, and tend to their health and well-being. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families of our parish, 
May the Lord's own peace rest on our households, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Anthony Ferguson and his new assignment as parochial vicar here at St. Bede, may he celebrate faithfully and reverently the mysteries of Christ and know our gratitude for his gift of self to the Church of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the recently deceased, William Burns, for all who have died, and in memory of Margaret Hare and Paul Rinaldi, may they become God's new creation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we entrust all of these needs to your heart. We ask that you hear them and answer them according to your good and perfect will, for we ask them all through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing hymn number 997, This Is My Song, number 997. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bede and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. in singing hymn number 943, Eat This Bread, number 943.
us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a blessed, safe, and happy Independence Day. And uh, once again, I'm just grateful to be here. Uh, Jesus said in the Gospels, go out and have dinner at people's houses. I'm all about that. So <laughs> eat whatever is set before you. Uh, so uh, as many people as possible, I'd, I'd love to get to know you guys and uh, just be here for you as one of your priests. So uh, I'm grateful to be here in Williamsburg. I already bought my Bush Garden season pass. So uh, <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing number 996, America the Beautiful, number 996. Um. 